Hey guys, uh, welcome to what Lightworkers um, group. What was the new title, Erica? Intuitive Souls. Intuitive yeah. Souls, that's right. Um, we're here today to talk about mediumship. Well, not only mediumship, but there's other subjects that we're going to touch on. Um, but I will be interviewing Erica and she will just kind of tell us about her journey and how everything started for her. Um, Erica, so yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so obviously my name is Erica. I, um, I'm 32, I have two little boys, I have a husband. I live in Connecticut and so my spiritual journey, I mean, first off I need to point out that we are all on a spiritual journey, whether we know, know it or not. Um, but I really kind of opened up to spirit of June of 2017. Um, you know, I was just kind of not feeling myself. Like I, I can't describe it. Like I just kind of felt like my world was just not what I wanted it to be. I felt very, um, detached from, you know, my friends and, and the people that I was surrounding myself with. Uh, I wouldn't, and I just kind of had to take a step back and I just really evaluated what, you know, my life has become and, and, you know, the people that I was surrounding myself with. And I realized that there had to be something more than this there had to be some sort of like more than this world or more than we see more than, just more than you see more more than you know what you know our, our reality is you know just the the basis of like you know I'm a stay-at-home mom so it was all about keeping up with the Joneses and who had the best you know pictures and who had the best birthday parties and all of that and I just never felt completely attached to that sort of life. You know, I didn't think that having a thousand dollar birthday party for a kid was that important. I, I would much rather see my children be good people and teach them, you know, kindness rather than, you know, having to show off all this, you know, all the toys they have and everything like that. And I, I always felt detached in that way, but, you know, June of last year, just, I, I just had to change. I just had to change the people that I was putting in my life and, and the way I thought I was supposed to parent and the way I thought I was supposed to live. It was just, and, and really looking back at it, it was just so, even my husband too, we were just so taken back by how negative we were just how negative we lived. Like we were always like, we'll be happy once we move out of this house. We'll be happy once he gets a raise. We'll be happy once, you know, we're not paying so much money in preschool and stuff like that. It was always, we will be when this happens. And we yeah. were just like, that's miserable. That's a miserable. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's actually a, a great observation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're just like, there has to be another way. There has to be a more positive way to live. And I just kind of was sitting there one day and I'm like, I was going through um, Netflix and The Secret popped up. I remember reading a little bit of it when it came out, like my mother had it. So I was like reading it, but you know, I was so young back then that I really wasn't resonating with the information in front of me. So we watched This Secret and it just kind of opened my eyes. And I really realized that we were attracting what we were putting out. Our negative energy and our and our our just way of thinking was attracting everything we didn't want. So, you know, we, you know, I really just kind of took a step back and I was like, what can I do to make my life happier? What can I do to have a more fulfilling life? I started meditating. And through meditation, um, I was led to spirit. And my life since then has been, I, never in a million years would I have <laughs> sat here and said, 
I'm a psychic medium. Okay. No, I mean, it happens. It's so funny how you're saying right. that because once you step into this type of, I don't know what you call it, work. Um, I call it soul work. Because yeah. Soul work. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like you just never, ever, ever imagine. Right. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. yeah. I was always interested in it. I always, you know, I, I read like ghost stories and stuff. I always had an interest in it. And I always, it always piqued my interest. And, you know, I would go, like I had a tarot reading, a tarot reader at my bridal shower. Um, oh, that's so cool. That's yeah. a really neat idea. <laughs> yeah, it was really, I give my props to my mom for that. But she told me in 2011, she's like, you're psychic. She's like, you're very gifted. And, you know, the moon card came up in my tower reading, which is always like, you know, indicates psychic abilities and all of that. And, you know, I laughed it off so much. I was like, oh, okay. I like, I don't even know, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. How can I be psychic? Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, so I always rubbed it off, but, you know, I would go to psychics here and there and they were just like, you are empathic, you're intuitive. And I'm just like, I never knew what intuitive meant. You know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody really knows what intuition is. They're always like, oh, it's a gut instinct or, you know, oh, it's this. Or, you know, some people think it's like, you know, our, our man-made, you know, our, our reaction, like fight or flight. And it's so not that. Yeah. Um, it's just a simple, I feel like my intuition is just kind of my connection to other wisdom that I, my monkey mind doesn't have. Right. And so, go ahead. Okay. So, you started this journey in, in 2017. Who have you trained with? I have trained with um, Adam Bernstein. He is a psychic medium. He is very good. Um, I've done some workshops with him. I've what done type of workshops like introduction to mediumship medium, or yeah, introduction to mediumship. That's what he really focuses on is just like introduction to mediumship, um, fast mediumship, like for a platform. I've done something with that with him. Um, I've done some classes with Sal Jade online. She's very good. She's, she's not a medium, but she's a very good psychic and she's very good with tarot. Um, and I also, every week I'm with Anna Rolesco, who is also an excellent psychic medium. And she trained under Janet Nahovic mm -hmm. from the journey within church in New Jersey. And, uh, Janet actually has a lot of affiliates through with the Arthur Finley college. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm very selective with who I train with. Right. Um, you have to be, yeah, you have to be, you know, and I take this very seriously, um, you know, because I always felt like if I do something, I'm going all out. I'm going to educate myself. I'm going to make sure I'm the best I can possibly be about with this. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I really watched who, you know, I, I did my research. I watched their uh, platform ratings on YouTube and I, I looked into them and I'm very happy with who I have trained with, especially Anna. Anna's like my number one. Um, yes. She's the one that I work with every week. She's the one that... Um, would you consider her your mentor? I would consider her my mentor, yes. She's really, she's very down to earth. I really, um, she she puts the science in it, if that makes any sense. Like oh, yeah. Like in That's, mediumship, she yeah. really breaks it down and she's like, you know, she's not like a woo-woo <laughs> Sort of, you know, with like the she's not like a gypsy. She's actually a very successful um, superintendent, I believe she is, in a school district, and she does this on the side. But she's retiring, so she's going to start doing intensive days and stuff like that. But I really like people that dumb it down to a science. Like I love John Edwards. I I love. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, I like it when they're just so down to earth and they're just like. This is it. This it's all energy. All it is is energy. Yeah. And it's it's so yeah. difficult to really grasp that in the beginning. Right. But as you continue to practice and then you sense it and you're like, oh, there it is. There's just yeah. energy. Yeah. It's so just energy. 
when was your first or what reading or what practice or when did you realize and and kind of said to, to yourself hey i'm a medium <laughs> there was an instance um i'm trying to remember when it was it was in my son was born in 2012 I, I believe it was in 2013 i went to a um gallery reading at a restaurant um like a half hour away with my aunt and my grandmother and we were looking to get in contact with my grandfather mm. um you know and you walk into this restaurant and then you walk into the bar area and then you have to turn left to where the gallery reading was in like a catering room um and as soon as i walked in as soon as i walked in i felt a different energy and i can't ex and i couldn't explain it you know i i just was like all right, maybe it's just because it's a bar and I'm not like a bar person. But as soon as we walked into the room and we got our seats, I just felt a rush of energy and I just looked up and I looked at my grandmother and I just heard myself say, Chris is here. Um, Chris is my sister-in-law's brother who passed 18 months prior. Uh -huh. We were friends, you know, we were friendly or whatever, but there was no blood relation or something like that. I wasn't going there to get any message from him, but I knew he was there. I, I sensed his energy. I knew he had a message and I just kind of like, my aunt looked at me and she's like, it looks like you've seen a ghost. And I'm like, I probably did. I, I couldn't explain it. Like she said, my face became white and we were just sitting there and I just knew I was like, Chris is going to come through. Chris is coming through. So the medium starts and the first person to come through is Chris. That's awesome. Yes. And that yeah. was, well, that was 2013. So that was five years ago. And I sensed him and, you know, I wrote everything down that he was saying so I could give him, give my sister-in-law the message. Um, and that's when I knew, but, you know, I had, I didn't realize that was mediumship. You know what I mean? Like when you yeah. saw this, you're thinking like, you know, it's, it's, you know, Alison Dubois, like, you know, the person. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. That is so not the case. That's no. so not it. And I didn't know that that just feeling of energy was mediumship. Yeah. You know, I just thought, oh, you know, whatever, maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me. So I didn't really, I just left it like that. Um, and a couple of years went past and then I just was so drawn to this work. It was so weird. And I've had, and I had other instances, like strange instances where, um, you know, I, I just, I have so many weird stories that like freak everybody out. But like another one was last September, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just started meditating. So my intuition was really strengthening and, and I was really feeling like, I just felt like a different shift. Right. That, you know what I mean? When you start, no, uh, it, oh yeah, you feel different. Yeah. Um, so I had to get my um, wisdom tooth removed and I had to go probably 40 minutes away because it was an emergency. Yeah. Um, tooth pulling. And I just remembered sitting in the hospital. I was like, my friend Mike is buried around here. And I, you know, I looked up where he was buried and it was eight minutes away. So mm -hmm. I said, you know, after I'm done, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to visit his grave and, you know, put some flowers on it. So I go to this uh, graveyard and there's about, it's not a big graveyard, but there's at least a thousand graves. Yeah. And they're all scattered. It's not like new section, old section, you know, it's all, it's all scattered. So I go in, there's no place for me to find where he's buried. So yeah. I just kind of stopped my car and I just said, show me where he's buried. Uh, and I just asked my guides. I was like, so yeah, I'm going to ask you about your guides because this is like yeah. one of those things when you're starting in your mediumship. Right. There you're you doing so you like you were saying, yeah. So you were saying right now that you were in the hospital and all of a sudden you just get like a, yeah, new, just out of nowhere. Like a download. Yeah. yeah. So when we're starting in our mediumship, when mm -hmm. we're trying to figure this out, sometimes we get some random stuff. Like we could be sitting oh, in the middle of nowhere. Like I, I was at work a couple of days ago 
and I was talking to my boss and then all of a sudden I just got this sense that, Hey, what are you going to get your mother for, for her birthday? And he looks at me and he's like, what are you talking about? I said, your mother's birthday's coming up. What are you going to get her for her birthday? And he's like, how do you know? I'm yeah. like, I don't know how sometimes I know things. It just happens. <laughs> That happened to me too. That was one so, of my weird instances. Yeah. Yeah. So you were at the graveyard or grave, um, graveyard and you asked yeah. source, you asked universe, you asked your spirit yeah. guides. Show I, me just, where it I is. just basically saw my car. I looked up and I was like, show me where it is. And then all of a sudden I get out of my car and the Metro North train station or train flies right past this one little section that's like only this little section can see it. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm taking it as a sign. I'm taking it as a sign. So I go to this section and I just start walking down. And then all of a sudden I stop at this one location and I literally felt like, like I couldn't move any farther. Like I could not move any farther. There was like an invisible wall. So I just turn. And I just walk down the aisle and I'm looking at all the gravestones. And within that, I am drawn to his grave out of a thousand graves. Out of a thousand graves. I freaked out. I was like, I'm like looking around. I'm like, I'm freaking out. There's only, you know, some lawn cutters in another section. And I'm like, did this just happen? Was I just literally pushed to his grave? And it wasn't like I was looking for a while. It was literally... Yeah first row and I just that's when I didn't think that was mediumship but my husband when I told him about that he was like that's like he's like that's mediumship he's like you knowing that and knowing like he's like I think Mike pushed you to it or he yeah. like downloaded it to you and I was like yeah. no 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 and you know, then I just start listening to other mediums and stuff like that. And those sort of instances happen a lot. They yeah. happen a lot to other mediums. It's, um, it's, it's so interesting um, when we are in the receiving mode. Right. When we are accepting the messages to come in. Yeah. When we're doubting ourselves and fighting against it. Mm -hmm. For example, I just did a reading this morning and the person I was reading was really young. She was younger than me in her 20s. And um, a mother type of spirit came through. And I, I could almost sense that it was her mother. I always do mother, grandmother. Because sometimes they come in like. Right. The same. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, she's too young. No. But I'm going to say what is coming through. Right. And I said, this is what's coming through. And yes, her mom passed away when she was younger. Oh. But if we doubt ourselves. You can't doubt yourself. You can't. Because as soon as we start doubting the messages that are coming through, it's, it's we right. lose it. Right. So I, I had the same thing. Like, you just second guess it because it's like, oh, my God, is this right? Is this right? right? I had a reading and someone came through it was like a great grandmother figure and she was holding a baby and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna sound like an idiot I'm gonna sound like <laughs> <laughs> and then I said you know there's a great grandmother coming through and she's holding a baby girl and you know this woman's daughter was a stillbirth at 40 weeks old oh I because, see you know I, whenever I channeled a, a child, they're always with somebody. Mm -hmm. They're always with, you know, a grandparent figure or something. Like, children always have someone with them um, in spirit. So, but, you know, what do you say? Like, because you don't know if it's a miscarriage. You don't know if it's, right. you know what I mean? But you just have to say it. You just have to say it. Yeah. And you know? I mean, in a very, very understanding, nice way, of course. And I think our, our next webinar is going to be about ethics. Um, yeah, that's a good I one. think that's important. But yeah. um, going back to your training, I, what has been the most um, useful, the best advice that you could give new mediums? 
practice, practice. That's, you know, you might have an interest in it, but if you are really willing to put the work in and, you know, my biggest things are you have to kind of do something each and every day. If you're strengthening your intuition, it's a muscle. You know what I mean? You can't do one psychic read and then three weeks later do another one. Like I try to consistently do at least one thing a day. Um, and you know, the mediumship circles, honestly, it, yeah. it's, th that's really key. Like that was really important to me, um, to have at least one mediumship circle a week because even if you're not channeling, even if you're not getting anything, sitting in that energy and seeing it and seeing, you know, how other people work and how other people link, it's only helping you. It's only helping you. Um, so I would say, you know, find a mediumship circle and, you know, join as many Facebook groups that offer, you know, psychic exercises um, and just practice makes perfect. No, and, I have to agree with you. I think that doing something once a day, if yeah. it's, it's a picture reading, if exactly. it's, um, even though I really, really dislike those, which one did I pick? <laughs> but I, I need to continue to try those, but, um, uh, I think it is important to practice every day. You're yeah, right. It's a must a little something, you know, okay. just like choosing from the intuitive exercises that I post or, um, you know, just something, just something, even a one word exercise, just because you want to keep it fresh. You want right. to keep your, your connection strong and, you know, coming to you. Right. So let's move into more deeper um, things. Like okay. what is spirit to you? Wow. Spirit. When I saw this, when I saw this question, I was like, Ooh, that's a good <laughs> one. Um, honestly, spirit to me, spirit's going to be different for everybody. You know, you may think like, what I think spirit is, is it's the link to the unseen. It's, it's the link and it's the connection between you and your higher self. It's the connection between you and your spirit guides, the connection between, you know, your past loved ones and, uh, you know, divine, the divine source or God, if you want to call it, but it's that unseen connection to things that are not, you can't see them. Right. You know? Um, you know, some people probably have a different definition to it, but for me, that's what spirit is. And right. you know, I say spirit a lot, like, you know, I'll say, oh, you know, spirit works in different ways. It's because spirit is so immense and it's so powerful that it, it's such a strong thing and spirit is everywhere. Spirit right. is everything. And right. like you said, it's just if you're aware of it or if you're not. Yeah. You know? No, and I think you're right. I think spirit is something different to everyone. Uh -huh. And we all have different backgrounds. I mean, my family comes from the Mayan Aztec people where, you know, we're a, a little bit of everything because after um, the, the Aztecs, kind of took over every every um uh, tribe in the area we kind of were all a mix of Aztec but I know that we come from them and I mean back before the Spaniards came over to conquer Mexico we worshipped our own gods but when you know the Spaniards came over they say you will worship you know our god so mm -hmm. for me um Spirit is Holy Ghost. Spirit is Heavenly Father. For somebody else, it could be something different. So right. always understanding and being respectful yes. of everybody's right. term or everybody's definition of what spirit is, is right. important. Right. Um, and so I, I really, really do. It, spirit is everywhere. You can feel it. And a medium psychic person, I... I I know that we could feel it. I mean, if I start, if I close my eyes now, mm -hmm. I mean, I already feel it without closing my eyes, but <laughs> if I wanted to tune in to spirit, I could, I could tune in quickly, but yeah. it doesn't happen overnight. It, it comes with practice. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, and that's, that's the biggest thing is, 
you know, because even when I started, um, you get little, like, it's hard to explain. When you start your mediumship, it's this and this and this and this. And, and it makes sense, but the evidence isn't as strong. It's not strong. Yeah. Right. You know? But the more you practice, the easier it is to link and to grab the evidence you need to confirm. And, you know, it just kind of comes more naturally, but it's, it's like going to the gym. It's, it's yeah. like eating healthy. It's, it's repetition, practice, um, it's like anything practice makes perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> that was a difficult question, but thank you for answering it. it that was an amazing, amazing answer. Um, spirit guides. Mm -hmm. So that, this is a big one. This is a yeah. big one. Cause I, I have to tell you, um, in the beginning, I'm like spirit guides. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't you tell me about your spirit guides and how you met them? Um, I was the same way, you know, I would, I would watch, you know, Doreen Virtue and how everyone has a spirit guide and stuff. And I'm like, nope, no, <laughs> not me. Not me. I learned way too many hard lessons for anybody to be looking out for me. But once I was able to silence my mind, quiet my mind, get into that deep quiet, I was able to talk to them. I was mm -hmm. able to receive messages. And, and I know that it wasn't my imagination because some people are just like, they just don't believe it. They don't believe it. They think it's just their imagination. But the way they talk to me is not the way I talk to myself. Right. Like any sense you know what I mean they talk that is a great observation Erica oh my god being aware of that is right. very important go ahead I'm sorry right. just very um it's just different the energy the way when they talk to me and when they come in I don't talk like that you know what I mean I don't and I know that my monkey mind doesn't talk like that either they almost, and, and you'll know what spirit guide, the more you talk to them, you'll know what spirit guide is what and what they do. Um, you know, I, I know, you know, right now I, I got my Akashic records read. I only have two spirit guides right now. I don't know why. Cause I know that in the past I had five, uh, but you know, spirit guides will come in and out when necessary. Um, That's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, now I feel like because I'm on the right path and because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I don't need as many guides and the ones that I have are strict. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't need, you know, I don't need as much, um, support, but you know, spirit guides, it sounds crazy. It really does. My husband is very much open to this. He meditates every day and you know, he, he follows Eckhart Tolle and everything, but he just can't grasp spirit guides. Like he and that's okay. And I think it's okay. Yeah, I think also, that we're we're all in a different level, right? Of exactly. Awakening. So exactly. um, you could be at a higher level than he is, and I right. think eventually, you know, we will all get there. Um, right. But. Uh, it's okay. I, my, my husband is extremely open to everything, um, about right. this. Actually, he's the one that was like, I started seeing synchronicities around like numbers 11, 11, 12, 12, whatever it was when he made me aware of it. I'm like, Oh, I'm up. Like he woke me up. My husband woke me right. up and then I've been up by myself. <laughs> right. In a sense, in a sense, my husband woke me up too because he suffers. He suffered most of his life with really bad anxiety. Yeah, uh, and it it kind of peaked last summer just because he's an entrepreneur and there was a lot of stuff going on with his business and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I told him to meditate first because you know we try to we don't. I'm not opposed to, you know, pills or anything like that. But if you, if you can, if you don't need it, you know, if you can find a tool that helps you, why not? 
you know? No, I, yeah, completely yeah. agree with you. No, yeah. I have no issues with pills. I, some, you know, some of us do need it, but right. if, if you could like, you know, if, right. if, if you could figure out a different way, then right. that would be great. Yeah. So you have two uh, spirit guides, you said, right? Yes, do you I know their know. names? I do know their names. It's Theo and Magdalene. <laughs> Theo is like my gatekeeper. He's the one that's been with me since birth. Um, and Magdalene, from what she has told me, she is like, she's a temper. I feel she's like a temporary um, guide. Like she came in, because I started hearing her and listening to her when I started practicing mediumship. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she's just here to make sure like I'm developing and I'm doing okay. Like when, when I ask my spirit guides to bring someone forward, I usually ask her and, okay. you know, so yeah. I do feel like she's just here for my development and to make sure like I'm on this path and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this, yeah. in this life. Um, but yeah, right now those are my two, but I've, I've met others, but I guess they're not around. Yeah. 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 And you know, that's, that's, that's great. Um, sometimes we do have spirit guides with us all the time and sometimes they come in and for some reason, I'm not sure how that all, that all works, but they come in and they leave, um, depending on our need. Um, <clears throat> so going to another, one of those crazy questions. Uh -huh. So what do you think about if, if you're a medium, mm -hmm. you're a medium, I'm a medium. Do you believe in God? Yes. So do I. <laughs> um, do we have this has been coming up so much more often in this community because, you know, Doreen Virtue, um, who did all the Oracle cards and everything like that. She decided, I believe in August, she was like, I'm no longer doing this. God says we can't do this. And she, you know, I, I don't know. What yeah, I heard about that actually. Yeah. Um, how you know she's a millionaire and she's, if you look at any of your Oracle cards, she most, you most likely have one of her Oracle card decks. Mm -hmm. you know, she really paved the way for, um, you know, spirit guides and all of this. And I guess she had an image a couple months back and she read the whole Bible and she's convinced that, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Like this right. is devil's work. Right. And when I saw that, I was like, you have got to. Yeah. So that's a lot of us, for example, I know for, for me, it was so, so difficult for me to accept my mm -hmm. abilities because yeah. of my religion, back, my religious background. Um, it was scary. Yeah. It was really, really scary. And I, I met a 10 year old girl with the, so, I mean, she was awake. Her third eye was open and she could see spirits, physically see them. For yeah. me, I can't see them. They're quick. Like in my mind's eye, I could see features of them. Right. I have a knowing of them. Right. Oh, this little girl could see them. And at that moment in my life, I'm like, if this little girl next to me is able to see my grandmother right next to me, how is she the devil's work? How right. is she evil? Right. That's that drives so me. I was just like, no, this is not true. This isn't yes. true. Right. And I know in the Bible, there's a reference about King Saul going to visit a medium. Mm -hmm. And they had were and at that time mediums were not allowed to be in 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 that area, yeah. um, and she brought up um, Samuel from the dead, and I yeah. said to myself, why, why were mediums in the Bible bad? And I know I'm not a bad person. I'm, I don't worship any, you know, I don't, I'm not a saint worshiper. I'm not doing any craziness. I'm not killing, you know, chickens out back, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but what is it? And back in that day, at that time, and even in the Bible, knowledge is power. 
Absolutely. So I definitely feel like we do have a little bit more knowledge of the reality of how things are. Right. Not, not of what we see, but what is actually, we have the power to see, what is it, past the matrix. Yeah. And yeah. that is scary. Isn't that scary for some people? It is. It is scary. It really is. And, you know, I've met people that I met this one guy. And as soon as I walked in to the room he was in, just hearing him talk, I was like, he's connected to spirit some, some way. Like there's spirit around him. He can sense it. I know he can. And I talked to him and he knew he knew exactly that, you know, he's been connected to his cousins and stuff like that, but he's afraid of it. He's, he's still at that point where he's afraid of it. And I'm just, and it's sad because yeah. you, you can really heal a lot of people with this work. And yeah. I, I don't believe it's just common sense. You know what I mean? This is a healing, whatever you consider mediumship, it's under the healing modality. You're healing people. Right. You are, you know, you are giving messages to people that are heartbroken, that are grieving, that are missing mm -hmm. their loved one. How is that devil's work? Yeah. How is that devil's work? That's ridiculous. You know? Yeah. You know, I mean, and we know ourselves too. Right. It's like, you can't tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Right. There is a stigma. There is, it's a taboo out there. And I don't think it will ever go away. But right. what we do, I think as, as healers, Mm -hmm. um, we help others. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't consider this anything, you know, I'm not doing this to be famous and, and be out there. Like what's her, what's her name? The, what is it? Lisa Caputo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. This is, this is for me. It's more like let's help the world heal right. because I think right. we need it. I so, always said that, you know, the world needs more healers than mm -hmm. Kardashians. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, we need more people that are just here to help and, and you know, shed light. Yeah. Because, yeah. Don't get yeah. me started on the Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about our – the, your, your beginning and we talked about you know your your teachers and I'm assuming you'll continue to learn because yes. you know it's, I am it's a, like I am a student of life I will yes. keep on going to workshops I will keep on you know um learning you know I, I'm I love this work and I yes. love learning about it it's yes. my passion and, yes. and I'm so happy I found it yeah, yes. and I, I, I hear you because it's the same yeah. thing for me. Yeah. And we've talked about spirit guides and how that all works. Mm -hmm. um, I think as, as we continue to develop and help others develop as well, um, we'll continue doing webinars on, on yeah. you know, things, questions. If you guys have any questions for us, um, yeah. we'll sit down and research it and, and we'll, we'll do a webinar. But before we go, um, I know we've been talking for, for a while, but before we go, I would really like for you to walk us through how you tap into spirit. Okay. So it's, it's kind of different between when I'm in a mediumship circle, because as you can tell, like sometimes we get very um, different <laughs> spirits that aren't like completely, you know, like great cousins or something along those lines but we you know so what I do when I connect with a sitter is I just kind of close my eyes and I just say spirit guides and heavenly father please bring forth um someone in spirit to connect to the sitter for the greatest good of all so that's the greatest good of the spirit or the greatest good of the sitter whatever is more important and a lot of the times, not a lot of the times, but sometimes people will come in that the sitter doesn't want to talk to. Like, they're like, you know, yeah. you know, father that was 
you know, not a good father, right. or a, a mother-in-law that was nasty when mm-hmm. she was, you know, alive. And it really puts the medium in a position where it's like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but you know, they're so different when they're up there. They are so completely different. You know, I had a father-in-law, you know, he wasn't the greatest person here. And I was able to connect with him and you sense the difference. You sense the um, compassion and you sense the, you know, the sorry, like they're sorry. And they understand that they should have done things differently in this lifetime. And I don't want to say that they regret it because that's not really something that you feel up there, but it's, it's definitely hard when someone's like, I don't want to talk to them. Like, no, I want to talk to my mom. I don't want to talk to her. And, and that's not like, how it works either. Yeah, it's not like it's mediumship is not a telephone. And no. it's really, you know, it's, it's, it gets a little, you know, hard trying to explain to people, you know, this is what happens. I don't know. And I always say, I don't know who's coming. I don't know who's coming. You know, like, yeah, I, I just, this is what happens. And a lot of people understand, like, this is not, it, it's so, it's, I'm still learning and I'm still just so fascinated by the healing that comes through. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, the little things that I pick up and I say, you don't think, I don't think that they're healing, you know, yeah. but it's so healing for the sick. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree with you on that. Yeah. You know, some of the things, the messages that are coming through from people, you just never know that somebody might be holding a grudge right. from a person that had passed right. that is causing so much unknowingly pain in somebody's life until yeah. it, it's brought up and you're like, I could let go now. Right. Yeah let go. Like if, if, you know, um, it's funny because the person I read today was her, her mom was the first thing she said is sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm just like, I know I know. I I was getting really emotional too. And her daughter was like, I'm not sure what she's sorry about. And as we continued to dissect some of the stuff that she was saying, she understood. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when it, and that's another, you know, a good point for us developing mediums is that you can't sometimes, if a person sits for you, mm-hmm. that person had a shitty childhood and that person, the person that is coming through to you is happy go lucky even though that person's experience, the sitter's experience with that person was not good, the evidence, right. it has to match what the, per- the sitter understands. Right. So most of the time when I do readings, I sense the, if it's coming through like, I'm sorry, I was a jerk to you. I'm sorry, I hit you. I'm sorry, I never told you I was proud of you. Then say it. Don't try to make it, I love you, you are always great. Because I think that that takes away from the reading. Because we're healers, I think we need to highlight some of those things for them, the sitter, to heal. Right. I'm having, you know, there's a lot of stuff, like as far as gallery readings are concerned, I really don't feel, it's hard for this, you know, if you're getting this information and it's not great information, Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, sometimes it's better for private, you know what I mean? The things that you can, um, but I always try to say like, I don't know what I'm coming. You, I I don't know what I'm going to get. I really don't know what I'm going to get. It's not, I'm not making this up. No. It's downloaded into me and I'm telling you what I'm getting. That's it. No, but you're, you're absolutely right. And I think because and the way my readings come out or the way the, the information is coming through are filtered through me. Um, I do sense a lot of the, and I'm, I'm not sure why, and this is how I read and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the, um, 
I feel like the emotions, you really grab the emotions of. Yeah. So sometimes because you're right, we never know what's coming through. Right. If, but the emotion parts really, really resonate with me. I, I do say that a lot, but I need to be careful. I think, I think you're right about that with, when we're in a group setting, we have to be a little bit more discreet. Discreet, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's hard because you're just still like, I don't want to forget any of this information. Because right. you know, as soon as you get it, you can lose it. Just as yeah. yeah, exactly. It can be very relevant for the sitter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hard. And, and, you know, I don't, there's just a fine line and I don't, you know, because I feel like I'm more of a, a, a gallery medium picking up links and I'm good with the evidence and everything, but it's very hard for me to hold a link. I got it. Yes. It's I, 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 because we're just starting Erica. Right. And I think we'll continue to get better as we develop. Right. Um, and, yeah. So, um, you're gallery and I'm not gallery at all. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm you're, more in person. Yeah. I'm like yeah, one yeah. person at a time. And it's right. so funny. Um, but because we're almost out of time, do you guys have any, do you have any words for developing medium or friends? Yeah. Um, you know, mediumship is something you don't ever stop developing. You don't ever stop developing. You are a medium until the day you die. This is something, this is soul work, and this is going to heal you, and this is going to heal a lot of people. Um, you're going to have to do shadow work. You're going to have to bring up things from your past um, that are not healed, because if you're not healed and some spirit comes through with that same problem, you're going to have a hard time connecting, and you're going to, you're, you're, it's not going to be as easy Um to bring a message across. Uh, I, you know, you, it's just, you're never going to stop developing. You know, we sit here and we say we're developing mediums because we are, we are developing, but we're never going to not be developing. You right. know, we're never, you know, we're going to be doing this and we're going to be developing our relationship with spirit and our relationship with our soul until the day we pass and then we're going to be really good at channeling and coming through because yes. we know all the secrets <laughs> yeah we don't, exactly yes <laughs> so um again we, i just wanted to remind you girls that if and guys <laughs> in the group yeah, i think we have a couple um, of guys, yeah. yeah if you guys have questions um about anything anything it could be about stones it could be about um moon water or it, I mean anything that you're interested in to know um just let us know send us a, a private message and we will research it and do a webinar depending on the um the need of the question yes. um, um we do have a poll um we do have a poll uh I think I put it in the announcements you know feel free to add anything if I missed anything um you know we're not you know, we see what everyone wants to do. And like I said, as far as a lot of people want to think, um, go into mediumship development and that's awesome. And the biggest thing is, is, is the only thing I can tell you about mediumship development, mediumship development is Maria and me and, you know, Stacy, we can only tell you what we know. We don't, you know, we, we can't give you a link. We can't give you the spirit. We can't, it doesn't work like that. It's your relationship with your soul and spirit. So the only thing we can tell you to do is just, you know, ground and protect and practice. Yeah. You know, come to the mediumship circles. Like I said, even if you're, you're not comfortable enough with, you know, trying to channel, that's fine. That's fine. Just see what it's all about. Right. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's very personal. Your yeah. growth is what you put in it. Yeah. Uh, so we just, you know, hope that you guys find find this video very helpful and yeah. we hope that you guys are open to you know this sort of 
you know, platform where we're helping you guys through webinar. Um, well, I just want to say thank you, Erica, for telling us a little bit about your, your story. You. I think yeah. next time I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks for, for coming and I hope you guys enjoy this and have a great day. Bye. Bye guys.